Hey, welcome to our YouTube. We're about to listen to a message from our church here in Hillsong, Denmark and Malmo from one of our team members. Make sure to comment below, like, subscribe, or even share with a friend and stick around afterwards for different ways to connect. Amazing. Why don't you give someone a high five or a hug or a kiss or whatever's appropriate? And you can grab a seat. So good. Can we also give a massive thank you to the creative team for serving so well? Thank you so much, guys. Well done. So, um, yeah, Kat has got two of her best friends in the world here visiting after 10 years from Australia, Carly Little, Sarah Karoya right here. So come on, can we give them a big hand? I think they have traveled the furthest to be in church this morning, uh, which is great. So Sarah is, um, like Phil said, Sarah is going to speak, and it's on prayer, it's on ministry, it's something that's really on her life as well, really believing God for healing, for spiritual freedom, that whole side of the Christian walk. And um, so we just thought we would invite the prayer team, but also invite anyone else that want to be part of it, just to stick around afterwards. And we're doing it in here, um, just so that we can record and everything, so that the other locations can um, watch that later as well. So one o'clock, so go and grab some coffee. Um, the kids, I think they are going to put a movie on or something for them. So if you do have kids, just leave them in there. Uh, or pop in and say to the leaders without your kids seeing you, that is normally the key, uh, that you'll be in for the input session, and um, it will be um, half an hour max. Is that okay? Um, yes, but that was awesome. That was one of the best offerings ever. Well done. That was so good. I was, I was just watching Espop here, and I was like, I, was just, I said it to him the other day because I wanted to honor him the other day, and I, I honored him in, the, in one of our PSGs, even though he wasn't here, because uh, the Bible says give honor where honor is due, yeah? And I just love, you know, Jesper and Rebecca, they've gone through so many seasons. They have, uh, they're not leaving, by the way. This is not a speech. Who is leaving is these two. Uh, Simon and Helena, this is like their last, sorry, I'll get back to you. Um, this is like the last, like, proper full day with Simon and Helena Bullen, part of our church for now in this season. Who knows? You know, who knows? If the Lord wills. That's the theme of the year, um, but next Sunday is a bit of a half Sunday, and then the Sunday after that, they are going to be the big cheeses of a local church. They are going to be senior pastors of their own church, and uh, so we prayed for them a few weeks ago and just really blessed them, and so again, thank you to you guys, so make sure you hug them, put money in their pockets, whatever you need to do, help them out, um, but you know, I just, I love seasons, and like, I, back to you, Jesper. This is not about you, okay? Um, but, you know, like, I just love, you know, you've seen Jesper and Rebecca, they've gone, they've been our kids' pastors, they have been uh, youth pastors, they have been our location pastors, and now, you know, they've stepped out, and Jesper started a company where he's building and doing that thing, and, you know, whatever that is. Um, but front row, you know, in services, at PSG, bringing the kids along, and I just love that because, you know, seasons come and seasons go, but the house of God, church remains. And I just love that no matter, no matter what your expression is of ministry, whether your ministry is working for church or whether your ministry is starting your own company, whether your ministry is raising kids, whether your ministry is being a student, whatever your ministry is, it doesn't change what we continue doing and that's loving God and loving people. Amen? So um, it's awesome. Thank you for being amazing. Um, there's so many amazing people in this church. Why don't you turn around to the person next to you and say, you are amazing. <laughs> Does that feel good? <laughs> who grew up in a Christian home? Or who had grandparents that were Christians? Here in Denmark, we have this thing. Um, I don't know if we still have it. We don't have it. We probably should introduce it. We had this little, um, this box, and uh, it was called Manicorn. Does anyone have Manicorn in their house growing up? And it was like, only a few of us. Um, maybe you'll, you'll know what it is. Maybe you called it something else. In our house, we called it Manicorn. It was like, it looked like an urn. Like, it looked like something you put your, you know, your, your dead relative's ashes in. Uh, so you've got to make sure you, you pick the right one, otherwise that gets awkward really quick. Uh, and then you, they, they would have just little, you know, squares of scriptures. And there were memory verses. So you could pick one, and then, did anyone have those? Okay, about 20 of us. 
And you know, it's always the usual ones. And you know, you, 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 the whole idea is that as you're growing up, you, there was these key Bible verses that you had to know. And, and they just became part of your, your foundation as a Christian. And there's a lot of great scriptures, aren't there? You know, for God so loved the world that he gave. See, you get, you get it, you know? In the beginning, God. Yeah, seek first the... God works everything together for good. What about this one? In this world, you will have <laughs> trouble, <laughs> sufferings, <laughs> problems. It's not, it's not a fun verse, that one. I mean, Peter, he was used to interrupting Jesus when he spoke, but that particular time, I mean, of all the times that you want Peter to interrupt Jesus, that would have been the one. I mean, every other time, you're like, shut up, Peter, let Jesus speak. He's the son of God. We only got him for three years. But this one time, Jesus is like, <clears throat> guys, <clears throat> you know, he's about to leave planet Earth, you know, and he's like, all right, guys, in this world, you will have trouble. That is a promise, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's not a suggestion. That's a promise. That's a promise on equal footing with every other promise that we quote. Jesus has promised us to bless us. Yeah, he's also promised that in this world, you will have trouble. John chapter 16, verse 33. I am speaking about problems today. So, you know, it's a super encouraging message. So when you spoke, yes, but I was like, yep, yeah, you're in the right place at the right time. Uh, John 16, 33, Jesus says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Because in this world you will have trouble. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. Today I want to speak a message that I've called, Earth, we have a problem. Earth, we have a problem. If you don't like that uh, title, I've got another one. Uh, and it's called, I Got Issues. Just look at the person next to you and say, I've, I've got issues. <laughs> I've got issues. You? You too? Why don't, we, why don't we pray together? Jesus, we thank you, <laughs> that Lord, that in you we can have peace. And I thank you, Lord God, whether people are sitting in the room, they're watching online, or whether they're in one of our locations, parents' lounge, wherever they are under the sound of my voice. Lord, I pray, speak through me like I believe you've spoken to me. Lord, I pray you may take this message and speak to every single person. Break it up into hundreds of pieces. Let people hear what they need to hear, Lord Jesus. Lord, I just pray, Lord God, that when we leave this place, may we leave more in love with you, Lord God, than when we came in. I thank you for the people that maybe feel the furthest away, maybe feel disqualified, maybe feel like, man, I'm, I'm out of here. This is the last chance. Whatever is going on in people's struggle with you, Lord God, I thank you that you are a present help. Your present help, Lord God. And so I just pray for those that, man, they've just come in and they're keeping the mask up and the facades up and everything looks right, but you just know that there's nothing that's right going on inside their soul right now. Lord, I pray that you would just embrace them, heal them, restore them, Lord God. Where relationships, Lord God, are, are just on shaky ground, may you reconcile today. May you put people on a new path today. I just pray for the next few minutes, Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. There are certain things in life that are what I call equalizers. Phyllis Neona, equalizers. You know, things that just equalizes all of us, doesn't matter who you are, whether you're rich or you're poor, whether you're old, you're young, there's some equalizers. Like for example, uh, being hungry. Doesn't matter how rich you are, at some point you're going to be hungry. <laughs> doesn't matter how poor you are, at some point you're going to be hungry, thirsty. You know, doesn't matter how rich or poor you are, you will be thirsty. It's, it's a great equalizer. In life, there are some equalizers. It doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter on what side of the track you were born. There are some things that just equalizes the human race. For example, a mosquito in the bedroom at night. Come on, somebody. Like, it amuses me to think that a mosquito is just as annoying if you're in a prison cell or in a palace. You know, a mosquito is a mosquito. Like, it is just that, that sound. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Has anyone already experienced that this summer? You know, that one mosquito that comes in and you're like, and then the wrestle, should I get up? 
Should I turn the light on and should I find it? And you can never find it until when? The light turns off. There it is again. It's like that sound. It's like, it's an equalizer. It is like the drill of a dentist. It is the great equalizer. I, don't, I haven't met anyone yet, and if you're here, you're a psycho and I don't want to know you, that actually enjoys the sound of a dentist drill. No. Are you for real? You are fired. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're, I'm scared of you. You're going to snap one day. That's crazy. You know, it is the great equalizer, except for Leslie. It's amazing. They are, they are equalizers across earth. Another one is sin. Sin is another equalizer. Sin is something that equalizes every single person here. Now, sin is such a loaded word. So let's just break it down because sin, um, the, the, the moment we say sin, especially if you're new to church, the moment we say sin, it just, you can immediately start to get pictures of an angry God, you know, you know about to smite you, you know, throw lightning bolts at you. Sin, you, you, you get pictures of some angry preacher you know, yelling on the streets, you know, you've sinned, you're going to hell, turn or burn, you know. But sin is like, it's such a loaded term. I was sitting at a dinner recently, and, and, and around the table, they found out I was a pastor. And when they found out, one of them broke the silence and said, so could you tell me, what is sin? Which is an odd question to ask. I had never heard that as an icebreaker when people suddenly found out that I was a pastor. Normally we go other routes, but this was a new one. I was excited about it. So they said, what is, what is sin? And then they, they, they start presenting different scenarios. Is this sin? Is this sin? Is it sin to do this? And they presented all these different scenarios. I mean, the answer was probably yes to all of it, but I didn't say that. I said, really, in order for you to understand what sin is, you first, or to understand whether that is sin, you first have to understand what sin is. And we talked about this before, that sin is a sporting term. They would shoot the bows and arrows in the ancient Greek, and they would aim for the bullseye. And if they hit bullseye, everyone would be cheering. If they miss bullseye, if they miss the ideal, if they miss the, 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 the perfect place, it would be less than the ideal. And the commentator would yell out, oh, no, he sinned. He fell short. He fell less than the ideal. That's where the term comes from. So I said to these people around the table, before we can determine whether something is sin, we first have to determine what is the ideal. So that scenario you're saying, let's flip it on his head and let's ask ourselves, what would the ideal expression be? If we're talking about relationships, what would the ideal expression of a relationship be? In a perfect world, I get that. I get that we could go, oh, but no one. Let's just pretend everything is perfect. Let's pretend there's not selfishness. Let's pretend there's not lust. Let's pretend there is not, you know, feelings out of control. Let's pretend there's no brokenness. What would the ideal expression of family be? What would the ideal expression of relationship? What would the ideal expression of joy, love, peace, Power, what would the ideal expression be? Now, once we've found the ideal, now we can look at the situation you're talking about and ask ourselves, is that less than the ideal? If the answer is yes, then yes, that is sin. And so really, sin becomes an, an equalizer because who knows that all of us, yeah, all of us have areas in our lives, in our thinking, in our speaking, in our doing, that are less than the ideal. Can I get an amen? amen. All of us, Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fallen short. All have missed the mark. All have missed the ideal. All have done something where we are living less than the ideal. And so it suddenly becomes an equalizer. You come in here today, you go, oh, I don't deserve to be loved by God. Who am I? None of us deserve this. And that is the other equalizer, grace. Grace. Grace is God's, God's grace. His no other grace, that is an equalizer. It's that every single one of us, there is not one of us that can earn salvation. None of us have done enough in order to be accepted by God. There is no one, whether you're in the front row or in the back row, there is not one person here that we're closer to God than someone else. Every single one of us have sinned and fallen short, and we need Jesus. That means that when we come into a community like this, 
there should be a sense of humility because I'm not better than you and you're not better than me. We both sinned. I, 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 there, should, there should be a sense of gratitude. Man, we worship, not because music is perfect. We worship, not because I feel like it. I worship because I'm grateful. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for being Jaira, more than enough. I didn't deserve this. It is the great equalizer. There's another great equalizer among humans. Problems. <laughs> Trouble. <laughs> Issues. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. Not might, not perhaps, not if you've sinned, not if you're poor, not if you're from a certain place, not if you're on the back row, not if you're late to church, not if your kids are not behaving. No, no, whoever you are, wherever you are, no matter how old, how young, how rich, how poor, no matter your education, no matter your background, you will have trouble in this world. It's the great equalizer. Earth, we have a problem. We've all got issues. And I wanna make a very simple point today. This is not rocket science. It's a very simple point, but it's the truth. It's not groundbreaking, but I'm hoping it's gonna help some people. And this is, the, this is the main point I'm making. You will always have problems, but your problems should change. Let me say that again. You will always have problems, but your problems should change. I mean, one definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Pro problems are constant. They're part of life. There, there will always be problems in life. When people go, oh, I'm just, I I'm just facing so much stuff at the moment. Has anyone ever been there? It's like, oh, I just feel like it's just coming at me. That's life. It's always gonna be coming at you <laughs> because in this world, you will have trouble. We live in a broken world. We are broken people. So in this world, we will have trouble. Problems, but our problems should be changing. They should be growing. Somebody say, give me bigger problems. <laughs> we will be going there. At the end of this service, you'll all be saying it. Give me bigger problems. I remember when we first planted church 10 years ago, when we started here in Copenhagen, and church started growing really quick. It was, it was, it was a crazy first year when uh, Copenhagen Jazz House, now Hotel Cecil. Um, it was, it's not suited for church. Um, we had one room downstairs, a, a green room-ish. That was the parents' lounge uh, where we had to chase people out that were left over from the night before. Get dressed and please leave and wash the couch, you know. Um, that was our parents' lounge and uh, the kids' room were the bar upstairs. You know, kids crawling around on broken glass that we couldn't get out of the floor. Amazing. And the entrance was the fire exit. Um, and we had no foyer, so it was kind of like we, we grew. And first we had one service, then we grew to two services within like six months. Then in summer, against all advice, we started a third service. And then at the, I think, October, November, we had our fourth service. And so we were doing service at 11, 1, 5, and 7. It was amazing. We were all living on, on adrenaline and Red Bull. It was amazing. And, and a little bit of and the Holy Spirit, and it was all happening. And I remember talking to a pastor, and I was saying, oh, we just need a bigger location. We can't find a bigger location. And he said to me, I wish I had that problem. You know, that's a good problem. And I get what he was saying, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah but it's still a problem. <laughs> You know, like, we, we, we hindered, but it's still a problem. But, but I heard his heart in it. The heart in it was, we don't have that problem because we're stuck. We, we, we're not growing like that. We're not seeing that in our context. We're stuck. And the, the, the truth is, our problems ought to change. I think the challenge in life is that most of us, we think that we can get, arrive to a place well, we don't have problems. We, we've got this like imaginary carrot at the end of the stick where we think, okay, if I have enough money, then I can pay for everything. If I have enough time where I can do everything, where I have enough energy where I want to do everything. I feel like that one's a big one as the older I get. 
I used to just think, as long as I've got time and money, now I'm not getting older and I'm thinking, oh man, I just need the energy. <laughs> it's not that I don't have the time, I just don't feel like it and my back is hurting. And you know, we, we kind of think that we can arrive to a place where we have no problems. But like the cheesy Pentecostal saying goes, new levels, new devils. You know, like there will constantly be new challenges. The challenge in life is that we are constantly looking around and like Paul says, we compare ourselves amongst ourselves and in doing so, we are not very wise. Church, let me just tell you, your problems do not disqualify you. Your problems do not disqualify you. It's like I got challenged like with my kids, I got challenged in my job, I got challenged... It's life. There will always be problems. Just make sure you get new ones and make sure you get bigger ones. Somebody say, give me bigger problems. <laughs> Paul wrote to his disciple Timothy, 1 Timothy 4.12, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Somebody say Amen. Youth is not an age, it's a mindset. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching, and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift which was given through you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them. Now listen to this. So that everyone may see your progress. May see your progress. We've often said in our church, your direction is more important than your position. Think about it. Your direction is more important than your position. Paul's not saying, let people see that you've arrived. He's not saying, let people see your perfection. No, he's saying, let people see your progress. Let people see you're dealing with bigger problems now than you were a year ago. Let people see your progress. Remember, church, God has never called us to be successful. He's called us to be faithful. He's called us to be faithful. Be faithful with the problems. Be faithful with the challenges. But sometimes we end up, what you two saying about years ago, where we feel stuck in a moment and we can't get out of it. And the challenge is that when we talk with each other, we simplify life so much, don't we? How are you going? I mean, how do I answer that? Like, really, how do I answer that in passing, <laughs> you know? Hey, how are you going? You know, how do I answer that? Yeah, good. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I mean, the short answer, I'm good. The long answer, have you got 45 minutes? Yeah. Right? Like, is that just me? Yeah. It's like the truth is, is everything good? No. Is everything bad? No. <laughs> it's life. In this world, you will have trouble. How's church? It's good. It's bad. It's life. In this world, we have trouble. <laughs> How's marriage? It's good, it's bad. In this world, we will have trouble. How's the financing? It's good, it's bad. In this world, we'll have trouble. How the kids? They're good, they're bad. In this world, we'll have trouble. How your hobby go? How's your hobby going? It's good, it's bad. In this world, well, how's your diet going? It's good, it's actually really bad. In this world, we'll have trouble. None of us arrive but let people see your progress. We all have problems, just don't have the same problems. Grow your problems. Somebody say, give me bigger problems. <laughs> Come on guys, you... <laughs> I'm telling you, like if you can, you... I don't know whether you're just getting stubborn now or you're not catching it. <laughs> because you wanna have bigger problems. Okay, we'll go further. I mean, the, the, the quicker you say it, the quicker I'll be done. <laughs> Somebody say, give me bigger problems. <laughs> oh, whatever, stop that. <laughs> Listen to Paul's frustrations. First Corinthians 3, 1. Brothers and sisters, I couldn't address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly. You are mere babies in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly because there's still jealousy and quarreling and fighting amongst you. And if there is that, aren't you still worldly? Are you not just acting like mere humans? Paul is like, really? Like, are you still here? 
Are you still dealing with the same problems? That's what he's saying. He's saying, has your problems not grown? I mean, could you imagine if problems always remained the same? Could you imagine if I was up here still goo goo gaga? I hadn't learned to speak. Imagine if I was crawling around because I hadn't learned to walk yet. If I was like, sorry, I need to take my pacifier, my dummy out, and put it down. You'd all be like, uh. I mean, there's an issue here. <laughs> because we should be growing. Now, when I was a child, Paul says, I thought like a child, I acted like a child, but now I become a man, so I put away childish behavior, and now I grow up. Does that mean that now I have no problems? No, but my problem is not about to learn to walk. Now my problem is learning a degree. Now my problem is learning a job. Now I've got the challenge of learning to be married. Now I'm learning relationships. Now I'm learning friendships. Now I'm learning a new language. Now I'm learning a new skill. I still got issues, but my problems have grown with me. I've got more mature problems now. My problems are bigger, but they're still problems. Somebody say, give me bigger problems. We're getting there. <laughs> See, when you get that diploma one day that says, this person, not you, not this person, <laughs> this person is a doctor. What, are you a doctor? Huh? Are you a doctor? No. Um, <laughs> I felt the pain of that no. <laughs> no. We'll talk later. But when you get a diploma that says, this person is a doctor, this person is a teacher. This person is a lawyer. This person is a banker. Whatever that diploma says, what it's really saying is this person has faced enough problems that they can handle whatever problems that you're going to give them now. That's what they're saying. They're saying, hey, we have, we have exposed them to big enough problems and enough variety of problems that when you step in there with your problem, you can look at that diploma and go, yep, I've faced that before. I've seen problems bigger than this before. The worst thing that you hear from a surgeon is going, oh, you know a dentist? Oh, I've seen this before. Let's just drill and see what happens. <laughs> you don't want that. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, wanna, you want someone to say, yep, been there. Seen that before. Dealt with that before. So I'm ready to handle this now. That is, that's all it is. Stop asking God for bigger problems till you learn handling the smaller ones. Isn't that what Jesus is saying in Luke 16? Whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with much. Whoever's dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. God, He places us in situations or maybe if your theology is different, maybe He uses situations to teach us, to show us, to train us. But who knows that a test is not given till the end. You don't show up first day of university and go, all right, time for a test. No, it's at the end to say, hey, you've already faced it all. It's in you to pass this test. It's like the teacher saying, hey, I've taught you everything, the whole curriculum, it is in you. I'm now gonna give you a test to show you, you got what it takes. Isn't that what Paul says, 1 Corinthians 10, 13? He says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind, saying, hey, we've all been tempted. Yeah, great equalizer. And God is faithful. I love that he just throws that in there. God is faithful. In your temptation, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Think of the test. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Now tempted, often when we hear temptation, we go, oh, big bad things. But tempted literally just means an opportunity for my faith to fail. T temptation is just a crossroad where we say, okay, I'm either choosing to trust God and not lean on my own understanding. That's all it is, okay? And so, so Paul is saying, when you do get tempted, it is like the final exam of school. You've got what it takes. It is in you to get through this, but even if it's not, God will provide a way out. What does that mean? It means that there is nothing that you will face in this world that should cause you to stop, that should cause you to go, I can't handle this. It is in you 
to go through whatever you're going through. It is in you to go through that problem. It is in you to go through that trouble. It is in you to go through that season. But even if it's not, God will provide a way out. He's faithful. He will not let you stay on your own. He will provide a way out. In 1953, a Swiss doctor and mountain climber by the name of Edouard Wyss Dunant. It's a great name. He came up with the concept of the death zone or some call it the lethal zone. In mountaineering, the death zone basically refers to an altitude above a certain point where the, the pressure of oxygen is so low, so insufficient that life cannot be sustained. And, and the, it's widely agreed that the death zone, it starts at about 8,000 meters. So just around Himmelbjerg, okay? Um, at 8,000 meters is where the death zone starts. And beyond that, you can't live there. You either got to be quick or you take oxygen with you if you want to remain there for a longer period of time. You know, I believe that there are places that God wants to take you, where there are things in your life that it cannot survive if you want to go there. They, they, they God places you in, in, in situations that are so hot that things has to burn off. That he places you in situations where, man, you gotta let some stuff go if you're gonna survive this. If you're gonna get through this, and it's in his mercy that he's taking you to the death zone. It is in his mercy he's putting you in situations where you feel so under pressure, so under, you know, under fire, where you can suddenly stand up and give a testimony, God has been faithful. God has been faithful through it all. I knew a little bit about His faithfulness before. I had heard a rumor about Him before, Job said, but now my eyes have seen Him for myself. There are places that God will take you where you gotta make a conscious choice. If I'm gonna get through this, I've gotta let some habits go. If I'm gonna get through this, I've gotta learn to pray. If I've gotta get through this, I need to get in the Word again. If I've gotta get through this, I need to be in church. If I've gotta get through this, I need to surround myself with good people. He's taking you through those problems. Hebrews 12, 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Not everything starts out as a sin. Sometimes it just starts out as the things that so easily entangles. It just starts out as something that hinders us. It's like coping mechanism. It doesn't start out as a coping mechanism. It's like, oh, having a glass of wine, that's not sin. No, but having a glass of wine every night and then a wine, a, a bottle of wine every night, you know, maybe, maybe we need to talk about this. If it's like, I can't sleep without this, whatever this is. It's gone from just this was hindering me to now maybe it's becoming sin. What is sin? Less than ideal, less than ideal. Let us throw off all the things that so easily hinders us. That attitude, and God's like, how can I get rid of that attitude in that person's life? I know. Let's put him in a situation that's really annoying. Let's say serving in church. Not for real, right? Because suddenly you're grinding against other people. Your personality against their personality. What's, what, what is God doing? He's getting rid of some stuff. That's why discipleship doesn't happen in isolation. It happens in community. That's why we say serve. Not serve so we can build church. Serve so you can, your salvation can be built. So character can be built. Because character is built in community. Because Matthew says something that annoys me and then now I've got to be like, okay, how do I deal with this? Do I forgive? Do I confront? What do I, what do, I do? I let some stuff go. Paul says not everything it's harmful, but not everything is beneficial either. Maybe there's some stuff that you've got to let go of. That's why we must have climbing companions. Climbing companions. You don't go climbing a mountain in the death zone on your own. You, you find people you can climb with, connect groups. You know, brothers, sisters, church community, you find climbing companions, people that will, that will point things out. You know, are you really taking that with you? You know we're climbing to the top today. I don't know if a piano is the best thing to bring with you today. 
You know, it's like someone saying, you want to do what with your life? I want to do this. You know that attitude? You might want to let that one go. I don't know if that's going to take you to the top. You know that habit you've got? I think you need to let that one go because that's not going to get you to the top either. Those are climbing companions. Because you see, climbing companions, they point out good problems and bad problems. It's like, you know, you know when you go on a diet? Anyone ever been on a diet? No one's going to admit to that? Okay, cool. There's literally one person who put up their hand. Um, you know when you go on a diet and you're told there's such a thing as good fat and bad fat? Anyone with me? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. You know, like, there's good fat and bad fat. Same with problems. There's good problems and bad problems. Bad problems are things that often come out of the sins that so easily entangles. Bad problems are often done in isolation. Bad problems are often done out of a coping mechanism. Is often done out of some of the things that we didn't shake off in the process. Those are bad. But good problems are problems that come with the territory. Oh, you want to start a new business? Oh, you're going to face some problems. But they're good problems. Oh, you want to buy a house? You're going to face some problems. You're going to clean a roof. You're going to pay a mortgage. Something just broke. You've got to fix that. You don't have someone that you can call. You've got to do that now. There's some, that's, those are good problems. It comes with the territory. Oh, you want to be part of ministry? Amazing. Oh, you want to preach? Fantastic. Are you ready for the problems? Because there's good problems that come with it. In this world, you will have problems. Just make sure you get some new ones. Make sure you get some bigger ones. Somebody say, give me bigger problems. When you first started that company, you were like, oh, I just want customers. Soon you'll have problems with staff. Those are bigger problems, but they're still problems. Then you'll have this bigger problems, bigger bills, bigger problems. When we first started church, there was just one service, 11 o'clock, woo! Then two services, bigger problems. Three services, bigger problems. Now we're in this building, bigger problems. We, don't, we only have a few months left in this building. We have no idea where we're going after this. Bigger problems. <laughs> but we want bigger problems because this means we're growing. We don't want to keep being crawling and goo goo on the floor. <laughs> we want to be growing. Somebody say, give me bigger problems. We all have challenges. Just keep getting new ones. Keep getting bigger ones. And I'll say this much. I would rather have problems with Jesus than facing them on my own. And if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, I don't know how you face your problems on your own. I kind of want to commend you and say, well done, but I also feel sorry for you because you were never created to face problems on your own. We're talking about the helper, this chapter. The grace, grace, the word grace literally means God's help. God's help. That's all it is. Grace, Danish word, no. It just means God's help. Because his grace is a perfect fit for your problem. He, he says, Paul said like this in Philippians 2, 12 and 13, he says, God will work it in you so you can work it out. So that when you face a problem, you go, oh, I don't know how to do this. Exactly. God's grace, his help. He's a present help in times of need. In this world, you have problems. But don't lose heart because I have overcome the world. So in me, you can have peace. And so I'd love to, we're going to pray for two groups today. The first one is I want to pray for people here that you don't know Jesus. Or maybe you once did, but for whatever reason, you walked away. And today you're just like, man, I don't know Jesus like this. I have problems. And you maybe thought, or maybe it's because I don't know Jesus. I'm not about to say to you that if you know Jesus, you're not going to have problems. You might even have more problems. Or might you have new problems, <laughs> different types of problems, but you're still going to have problems. But you will have a helper. God's going to help you. You're going to, you're going to say, Jesus, take the wheel. I can't do this in my own. So I want to pray for anyone here. You don't know Jesus. Or maybe you once did. But to be honest, if you and I were to talk after the service, and I was to ask you just straight up, is it still real? You couldn't honestly say yes. I'd love to include you in this prayer of just saying, God, I want the reality of you in my life. Jesus, I need you in my life. I don't want to do this on my own. So could I get everyone just to close your eyes, bow your heads, just to give everyone a moment of, moment of privacy in Olbo and all who's online. Do you know Jesus? And if you don't, this is your 
moment. I'm going to count to three. And when I get to three, I want every person who wants to say yes for the first time. Or today, you're coming back to Him. When I say three, you just say, hey, just lift your hand. And you're saying, that's me. Please include me in that prayer. I want to say yes to Jesus. You ready? One, don't let this moment slip by. Don't put it off to a moment you're not guaranteed you have. We have right here and right now. Two, I'm not talking to the person next to you, in front of you, or behind you. I'm talking to you. Do you know Jesus? I'm not saying go out, become perfect, come in, and then He will love you. No, He already loves you. All there's left for you to do is to say yes to Jesus and receive the free gift of salvation that cost Him everything. So when I say three, I want every person who wants to say yes for the first time, or today you're coming back. When I say three, just lift your hand. You ready? On three, three. Just lift your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. That's awesome. Well done. Anyone else here? You're saying, I want to say yes to Jesus. I need Jesus in my life. Anyone else here? Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. In Olbo, in Aarhus, you lift your hand. At the end of the day, it's not about me seeing you. you. This is an outward sign of an internal commitment that you're saying yes to Jesus. Online as well. Anyone else? Beautiful. You can put your hands down. This is what we're going to do. We're going to say a prayer, just line for line. I'm going to say it. Ask everyone to repeat it because we're family. But especially those of you who di- you lifted your hand, or maybe you didn't, but you know you should have. Come on, just repeat this prayer after me. Just say, Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for my sin. But today I choose you. But today I choose you. I make you my Lord and Savior. I make you my Lord and my Savior. And from today. From today. I am a follower of Jesus. I am a follower of Jesus. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. And I am free. I am free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, can we congratulate? Come on, can we celebrate every person making this decision? Beautiful. So good. So good. Hey, if you, um, if you prayed that prayer, um, man, we congratulate you because of the decision you made. One thing is to make a decision. That is what we say before. You change the direction. Now we've got to walk it out. And we'd love to walk it out with you. And the first thing that's the most important thing is that you get to know Jesus for yourself. And so we'd love to give you a Bible. It's a New Testament Christian Bible. We have a Danish and an English version just over here, my right, your left. Uh, we just have our little next lounge area. And um, if you pray that prayer, just, just go down, grab a free Bible in the other areas, the other locations, in the parents' lounge. Come and grab a Bible and, and get to know Jesus. Start to read it every single day. If you brought a friend, Bring your friend down. We know you are watching. I do it too. You know, you, the only reason you're watching and peeking is because you praying and hoping your friend will accept Jesus. And so grab a Bible. And the second thing I want to encourage you to do is just keep coming back. Keep finding yourself in a community where people will encourage you in the things of God. Amen? Amen. Can we stand to our feet? I'm going to take five more minutes. I'm sorry for those of you. I'm going to take five more minutes. I want to pray for some people. And we're going to get out of our seats and just make it a little bit messy if that's okay. Um, kids are fine. And then we have half an hour before Sarah's going to talk about how, everything I did wrong in my prayer time. Towards the end of Jesus' life, he's had the last supper. We celebrated at Easter. Um, month and a half ago we they had the last supper and then they they got in, the disciples got into a fight where they started arguing who's the greatest which is just so you know inappropriate the wrong place the wrong it's like dude like Jesus is about to die and you our guys are arguing about who's the greatest man it's like kids and and then Simon he's like you know Simon who became Peter he's like you know I, I, I'm the greatest <laughs> And I'll never leave Jesus. And then Jesus says this, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I've prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you've turned back, strengthen your brothers. To sift is, you know, they would take the wheat, the corn, the kernels, and they would throw them up in the air and all the, 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 the bad stuff, the shells, everything would blow away. And it's really, it is to shake 
and to expose. And that's what, what God, He does. He exposes things that needs to be let go of. Now, the difference between the God and the devil, good and bad, is that when the devil exposes, he exposes to shame. He puts shame on you. Shame on you for having problems. Shame on you for having issues. Jesus doesn't do that. He reveals to heal. He goes, hey, why don't we open, why don't we open this and clean this? You know, like, let's, let's, is that that one room in your house or in your apartment that's full of the mess? Anyone has that? You know, and it's like God saying, hey, should we deal with that room now? Should we open a window in there? Because it's starting to stink. I think something has died in there. I think we need to deal with that. It's like he's doing that. Like he's pointing things out in our lives going, hey, could we deal with this area now? Can we just, can we talk about it? That's what he's doing. So he's saying, hey, hey, Paul, um, Simon, the devil wants to sift you, but I have prayed for you. Isn't that an amazing promise? Jesus Christ is praying for you. Jesus is praying for you. Forget the prayer team. Jesus is praying for you. Jesus is praying for you. And when you have failed, which is crazy, because he goes, I pray that you will not fail, but he did fail. He failed three times, but he didn't fail completely. So when you have turned back, repented, changed your mind, when you have now strengthened others, which is really, that's the, that's the job of Christians, isn't it? is to deal with our own issues and then turn around and say, hey, now can I help you with your issues? Because I had issues too, because we all got issues, because in this world we will have problems. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray. We, these guys are going to sing a song, and we're going to pray uh, after the song. And I want to pray for anyone here today that you feel stuck. You've had the same problems for years, and you feel stuck in a problem. You feel stuck in the same addiction, same, you know, I, I thought my, my dream would be bigger. I thought the ministry would be bigger. I thought the business would be bigger. I thought I would have a child by now. I thought that, I didn't think that I was still gonna have the problem of infertility. I thought by now we'd have the problems of raising a child. <laughs> still problems, just new ones, bigger ones. Maybe it's self-inflicted problems and now you're stuck in them. And this is what we're gonna do. I, I want us to do something physical today. And, you know, we finally have a building where we can do stuff. I, I want you to get out of your seat and really just in physically show I'm leaving this problem. I, I, I want to I wanna step away from this problem and I want to have bigger problems. I want to have some bigger problems. I wanna, I wanna, I'm, I'm st I've been stuck here for too long. <laughs> I've been stuck in this moment. Give me bigger problems. I, I want bigger problems, Jesus. So maybe the, the front row here could just take a step back and all I want you to do is, if that's you, it could be all of us, it could be one of us. If that's you, I just want you, while these guys are worshiping, while these guys are singing, just to take a step out. We don't have to ask what it is, but just take a step out of your seat, wherever you are, and you're the floor, and you're the back, and just come down and just stand here facing the stage, okay? And then at the end of this song, we're going to pray for all of us, okay? And we're going to believe together for freedom from our current problems, <laughs> yeah? And we're going to believe for some bigger problems. Amen? Beautiful. We're just going to pray and, you know, maybe some of our connect group leaders or our team, you, you should know who you are. Anyone here that's really just been walking with Jesus, just come down and stand with someone and just put their hand on their shoulder and just pray with them. You know, and obviously if you're standing here down here and you're one of them, just stay here. But we're just going to pray for you guys. And we're just going to pray whatever it is that you're facing right now, that you, be in, you'll be unstuck, that the growth will take place, that we're going to lay some of the things back that are hindering us, the sin that so easily entangles. And we're going to believe for bigger problems. <laughs> yeah, we're going to believe for bigger problems, new problems so that everyone around you may see the progress. So if you will, if you're down here in the front, why don't you just, just stretch your hands out as if you're about to receive a gift. Jesus, we just pray for every single person now, Lord God, that is standing here, just feeling stuck. Lord, whether it's been inflicted upon them, Lord Jesus, or whether it's something that maybe just comes out of some choices that they now regret. Lord, we thank you that whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. And Lord, I pray for every single person down front here, Lord God, that is just being honest with you, that's being honest before you, Lord Jesus. I just pray, Lord God, for freedom, 
Freedom from past decisions. Freedom from situations. Freedom from addictions, Lord God. Freedom from habits, Lord God. I thank You. You're taking us to the next level, Lord God. You're taking us to the top of the mountain, Lord God. And there's some things that must go. There's some things that we must leave behind. And Lord, we just pray right now for every single person that just feels like it's a new year, but it's the same problems. It's a new year, but it's the same issues. Lord, we pray, give us new problems. Give us bigger problems, Lord God. We want something new, something fresh, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray where maybe shame and guilt is just weighing people down. Lord, we remove that off people's shoulders, Lord God, that there is no shame and there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We say that they are free and they are free indeed, Lord God. We pray for every single one of them. We pray for businesses. We pray for health. We pray for mindsets. We pray for mental health. We pray pray for people that are wanting to be in relationships, people that are wanting to start families. Lord, we pray for finances, Lord God. We pray for educations. We pray for children and grandchildren. We pray for health issues, Lord God. We pray for all these battles, Lord God, that have been ongoing for years. And we pray that today is a new day. It's a new start, Lord God. Behold, I am doing something new. Do you not see it? Do you not perceive it? We thank you in your name, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, give me bigger problems. Amen. Come on, can we just thank Jesus? Come on, can we thank Jesus? Amen. We really hope that that encouraged and blessed you. If you made a decision for Jesus, a massive congratulations from us. We would love to be in contact with you, send you a Bible and connect you to a local church. So just below in the details of this episode, there's a different way to contact us. I can encourage you to reach out so that we can help you. Obviously, if you live anywhere near one of our physical locations, we really hope to see you in person very soon. There is nothing like being in the room. Can I also encourage you, if this blessed you, why don't you share this with friends and you know, make sure you pass it on to them as well. Make sure to click, click subscribe so that you don't miss the next episode we send out. God bless you.